This is from Lazy Squire Games. And it's a uh, this is one of their production pieces right here. So it is your kind of that board game style material, but it's pretty solid. I have to say pretty solid. It wasn't too horrible trying to, I, I couldn't get rid of every single mold line because they're just in places that are impossible to reach. As we welcome our moderator Armored Wolf. How are you doing today? So yes, this is gonna be the more angelic version here. Now all I did was I just slapped on the same Steiner Res primer that we were using last week just because it was closest to my hand and I just grabbed it and I just brushed it on. Yes, this is just primer that's been brushed on. So what we're going to do here is obviously go with a lot of golds on the metals. Yes, I think we'll have, oh yeah, we got some, probably some kind of light blue here maybe on the cloth. There's a little bit of contrast, obviously some lighter color feathers, lighter colors on the skin. And uh, this right here, it's going to be some warm grays and, and such. I think what I'll do is I'll have some vines or ivy on this or whatever to make it look a little bit less threatening or something like that. I don't know, because we really want to do this again later on Friday and have sort of some object source lighting pumped up this way here and be doing some fun stuff with that. Like I said, I tried to get rid of what mold lines I could. If I see some more, like I think maybe there might be one here. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Sometimes, yeah, even here, as I turned it upside down, I couldn't see it anymore. So sometimes you never quite know where one might actually be a mold line as opposed to some kind of texture or whatever. We are going to do our usual pre-glaze, right? That's why we got sponges sitting over here. That's why we got a palette over here. Now this palette was used last night for a tutorial video, so there are some other colors on here that we're not going to be using. But we always have our opaques up here. And your lighter colors with oils, pretty much going to be your opaques. There's your off-white uh, yellow there, your brilliant yellow pale, your quick dry white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium yellow deep, terra rosa. We have a little bit of fanchion red over here. I think we're going to be throwing out some more over the course of this. We actually have a little Egyptian violet over here. Kind of, this is, We call this our wild side because you never quite know what's going to go on over here. Captain Caveman, how you doing? Thanks, Gallifire. We'll get you some Book of Wapple in just a second here. Was it Asphaltum over here? All we got over here is Prussian blue. And then here we got the usuals of Van Dyke Brown Indigo, Umber, and your Ivory Black. We may be adding some stuff to that. So, Captain K Man, I hope that you're doing well. And Gallifire, you can't quit me. How you doing? How are you doing? So, actually, I, I think that I ever actually add Chapter 50 to the Book of Wapple. I don't think we actually ever did. I don't think we did. Now, I'm going to see if we've got uh, right here. Let's go through some middle-range chapters here. Well, we're definitely going to respect the umber because people ask me, so what do you use as a pre-glaze? Hey, Angry Ham, how you doing? For things like golds, well, you're going to see a lot of umber and a lot of the terra rosa. So we will certainly respect the umber. And we had this conversation a whole bunch in our last broadcast, right? And even in Drax's stream... I'm having a little conversation with somebody. They like to think it all through before doing it. It's like, the more you think, the less you do. So think less, do more. And now you can see here, I mean, I didn't make this base, but boy, you can see the difference this base makes, right? As opposed to just sitting there flat on the miniature. And guess what's about to happen? It's going to get real messy. It's going to get super messy. Then it gets neat. But it starts out messy. Well, actually, here. <laughs> yeah, I I understand that you can't quit me. Here's the miniature. It's got to be so messy, Nessie. Because, well, these guys, didn't they start out messy, too? Recognize these guys. Hey, Sammy Poo, how you doing? I'm glad that you were able to apply that angry ham. So, yeah, you can't quit me. Uh, hey, uh, look at this. Check this out. Ah, look at that Moria army, right? Look at that. Look at this. Moria army. Yeah. Check that out, huh? And that's just the start. That is just the start because guess what? We got, oh, I think just seven more goblins just waiting to be painted. Either six or seven. Then we have to make a conversion of the goblin king. Oh, ho, ho, wait, wait, what else? What else came in? Yeah. That came in, and then where's my... Ah, oh, here they are. 
check this out. So these right here, we're going to paint these in that same sort of object source lighting with the same bases, right? Look at this, huh? These are also going to be my Iron Hills dwarves, I think. Iron Hill dwarves, guys. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, <laughs> there's 30 miniatures in here. When's the last time you saw something like that, huh? 30 multi-piece miniatures. Uh, let's see. Oh, Loim. Uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> you want a U.S. distributor? Right here. Gamecraft miniatures. Look at, look at this. Uh, Artisan Designs. Well, actually, they have Gamer's Grass, too. But, oh, and Bad Squiddo. Right? We love Bad Squiddo as well. So, yeah. That, that's your uh, that's your source right there because this is where I all that stuff comes from it comes from right here so loim they have really good prices and yeah <laughs> you you'll love it uh, it's, I got all the books but just using my old Bretonians uh, let's see, I think we're all caught up here oh uh, were those the uh, you can't quit me uh, now, was that the Frost Grave ones, or was that the Oathmark, uh, what did they call it, Skeletal? I think Frost Grave came out with a new undead army or something like that, uh, mounted and in on foot. And I was thinking of using those potentially for Black Numenorians and such. Ah, the new Skellies, okay. Hey, Rhapsody Studios, how you doing? Ah, uh, you can't go. I think uh, I think I saw the ones you're talking about. I think I saw the ones you're talking about. Oh, the other the other oath mark that I've got coming is the human infantry. Ah, oh. <laughs> yeah, Gallo fire. Uh, it's about to get really messy, right? It's about to get very messy. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take some of the umber we were talking about, right? Boom, in we go. This is nowhere near as who shall we say, liquid as, as it has been in the past, right? When some of the folks see the older ones. Yeah, Loim, that's why I didn't get him at first. Because I would have had to get him from the UK. And guess what? I got him from Amazon. And, well, let's just say that the person said, uh, uh, Jim, why, why are you getting him from Amazon? You could just get him from me because that's me. So now I just get them directly from them instead of screwing around with Amazon. Uh, oh, uh, Rhapsody Studios just got their second subscriber. Just their second. So that's very cool, Rhapsody. Did that just happen uh, during your last stream, or was that uh, was that kind of overnight or something in between streams? Uh, so Cobra Snake, I, I know, uh, actually, believe it or not, the last uh, Bolt Action tournament that I did, the guys, after the bolt action day was done, they actually did a small, tiny little frost grave tournament in between. At the Angry Ham says that going over to the oils has really pushed the productivity. Ah, Angry Ham. It, I mean, it makes it more, it just less of an effort, right, to be able to get that production level up there, right? I mean, I, I really hope that it does. That it makes it just, uh, you feel like you're making that progress, but without maybe all of the extra effort, hopefully. So how you doing there, Valfara? Yeah, Loim, the prices were really good, and obviously uh, it will take a whole lot less time to get there. Now, the selection is probably not going to be the same, you know, as, as uh, say, the UK part. But, you know, there's... Uh, you you can get pretty much all the the, the basics right that the stuff that you'd really want to get so I was happy with that uh, let's see now Valfira we we caught a bit of a break on Sunday I have to say we caught a bit of a break yeah Rhapsody you never know it's weird like that. There's times where I'll get actually more follows in between streams than on a stream. <laughs> As they used to say in the night, what's up with that? Now, I didn't understand, but it happens. I don't understand it. Now, here we are taking some indigo right here, just so you know. 
Gallo fighter, I, I think, uh, I know that Drex really, because he'd already kind of, uh, he'd been using the, the 8K Interactive stuff. He, he was one of the first to say, you know what, what the heck, let's give it a shot. And then more and more and more did. And it's been nice to see. Well, the other thing, too, I guess Gallo fighter, right, seeing is believing. When you see that there's no difference almost in the materials, you, when you see how durable it is, how much more vibrant it is, how much more easy it is, how much cheaper it is, you kind of, uh, it's in front of your eyeballs. Before then, it was more, well, maybe that's how it is, but when you see it over and over again, then you just gotta say, oh, you know what, that's pretty much how it is. Hey, Darth Lazarus, how you doing? Uh, no, Laz, those just came in. Those literally just arrived earlier today, maybe three hours ago. So, yeah, I haven't had a chance to put them together yet. But, like I said, uh, this is going to be for the Isengard army right here. E either that or for Angmar. That or both. But I'm, I'm thinking Isengard, this might be Angmar. I don't know. It's going to be one or the other. Hey, Foxaletto, how you doing? Yeah, Gallo, remember when uh, Eni, she tried it, and she started out with those, the, the water, whatever versions, and she used them once, and she said, well, I'm going to regular oils. And and she really, uh, what was the first thing she did? Wasn't it a big uh, Reaper thing? I'm pretty sure that she did. And I think she also maybe did the, uh, she might have did uh, Prinkles the War Kitty, I think. Uh, let me see. Hey, Aussie, how you doing? Nice to see you back. I just gonna scroll up here just to make sure. Uh... Ah, Sammy Pooh finally understood today how to use the mini as a palette. Isn't that crazy, right? Uh, we were certainly doing that on the Mandalorians, right? We're definitely doing that on these guys. Ah, uh, let me see. So how you doing there, Aussie? I just have to scroll back up here. I have a phenomenal mini. This would work so well with them. I just need the skill. Uh, th let me scroll back down here. Uh, uh, you got all the stuff sorted and uh, just the skills there. Uh, so Valfair also has a Prinkles now. Hey, pun expected. How you doing? Nice to see you. Nice to see you. So here, we're starting to cool things down a little bit. A little bit of indigo. Some of the ivory black making things a little more neutral down here. Uh, Aussie, well, feel free to, to lurk as always. But, you know, we're just getting started here. So we'll, we'll, be, we'll be here for a while. We shall be here for a while. In fact, I don't know if we... If we get through this in a certain amount of time, we may have to bring back out some of our Lord of the Rings. We might have to bring back out some of those Minas Tirith warriors. We might just bring some of those guys back. Uh, it's a it's a combination of Umber, Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of Asphaltum on the wings. There might be some other stuff that worked its way in there, too. In fact, in fact, just for just for funsies here. Now, Valfira, that is always my goal. I would love to start at 6, but I have to work around Kathy's streaming schedule and also, as you know, well, weather and other things, too. Uh, I also have to wait sometimes for videos to upload. So that Mandalorian video... Uh, I, I can't be uploading video, unfortunately, and be doing this at the same time. So, sadly, the, the Twitch stuff sometimes has to wait a little bit. Now, what we just did there, where'd you go? So I just threw a little bit of this Terra Rosa over the top. A little bit of this Terra Rosa over the top. The idea is that that's going to stain just a little bit more. And Velfair, I think you've heard us talking about how we like to have the Terra Rosa in our golds, right? Yeah, so that's always a good thing all. to do. So uh, thank you so much, Samapu. That is appreciated. Let that just drop right down in here for some nutrients. 
Uh, Rhapsody Studios just got their first commission, too. Uh, so the minis are chibi, and they're getting painted in oils. Rhapsody, I think that's going to be a... That's a good plan. Well, yeah, anything painted in oils is a good plan. But I think those chibis are going to be... I think that's going to be a little easier for you. Well, oils make everything easier, right? What am I talking about? I think you're going to like it there. Yeah, so Valfer, we just put some of that, uh, that Terra Rosa on here. And it should... It, it, see, that's going to give a little bit of a reddish hint there. But we still got that blue-ishness of the primer that's going to show through. Because none of these are really stain in color, except for the ivory. And I'm sorry, the <laughs> except for the indigo. That's the only color on here that really is going to stain much at all. Maybe the Terra Rosa just a little bit. No, nope, Angerham was just about to set the alarm clock, but no, 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 no. He's got to stick around for a bit. Nobody sleeps, nobody leaves till everything is done. The Unexpected has three garage kits. I, I don't know, Unexpected, I think it could be pretty fun. I think it could be. I, I think maybe... Well, I, I don't know if there's, what, the, the comic book style or the cell shading. I, it would be interesting to see somebody trying that in oils. I don't know if that was something you were going to try to do. Now, let's see. Rhapsody Studios is going to be streaming that thing. Uh, your commission tomorrow and Wednesday. And until they're done, Core Game Plus 2. Ex ah, well, speaking of commissions, look at this. Lord Dave. So, Lord Dave, I'm glad those are all done. How close did that come to killing you? <laughs> Hopefully not too close. Hopefully not too close. Day hey, White Wolf. Now, did you? Hopefully, you got the message. Uh, those couple of messages that I sent last night with the with the links. The first one was was your Dark Sword and other such links, and then uh, hopefully you saw the second part of that message that had the, the the couple of ring rates there. So hopefully you got those. Ah, okay, that's good. Yeah, so Valfira, the things that I got were some... They, those were the Oathmark figures that we were talking about as Lord of the Rings substitute miniatures. I mean, especially... Well, here. There's 15 Wolf Riders in here. Let's just say 15 of these is less than 6 of the GW ones. It's probably about the price of 4 of the GW ones. And then... Here's this, uh, there's 30 dwarves in here, 36 bucks, and as you can see, it's kind of the, it's the old style, right, with your actual choice of hands and weapons and heads and everything else, so you actually get to choose, like the old days, remember the old days? Remember the old days where you actually got to choose what the heck you wanted on your miniatures? Uh, let's see. Yeah, sure, Gallifier, throw, throw a link in there. If it's something that you want me to see, uh, if you could shoot me that on Instagram or something like that, that would be super handy, if you could do that. Yeah, White Wolf, uh, remind me just later on, once we get kind of going here, remind me to tell you a story about my me and my watercolor journey, which I, I think uh, it, it might uh, explain for you why. <laughs> why we do so many weird uh, things that are all against the rules here or the conventional wisdom. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little story. It's about the 2D art days when I was doing watercolors. I think you might get a kick out of that. Yeah, Rhapsody Studios, uh, it's the... I mean, as much as we... Now, these are nice, right? But A, there's pretty much only one way to do this, and B, there's only one way to do this, and C, the only way to convert this is to build it all, chop it apart, and then mess around with it. So, you know, it's just, uh, let's see, a pun expected wants to try cell shading. I need to do something like a say amount of my, well, uh, unfortunately, pun expected, my anime foo, the only thing I've ever even seen well, and it probably doesn't even qualify as anime, it would be the Star Blazer stuff. So I uh, I am completely and totally an ignoramus when it comes to those things, and I apologize for that. Uh, let's see, I hadn't looked at the North Star. Yeah, honestly, they're just, uh, 
between the price, right? And and also what's the other stuff that we were using? The frost grave minis? Look at this. I'm sorry, the uh fire forged. These guys. Thirty dollars for a box of twelve or thirty five dollars for two ancient decrepit GW nasty candish horse riders that don't fit together. That they're also not in stock ninety percent of the time. Uh, I think we're all, let's see, yeah, so White Wolf, I'll, I'll get you, I'll tell you that story. E either I'll just shoot you a message with it, or we'll kind of go through it here, and it might explain why I do some of the bizarre things, technique-wise, <laughs> that are not anywhere near what the so-called conventional wisdom is. Uh, oh, Armored Wolf, you got you got the dice already. Wow. I, I know you sent me the uh, the, the mock-up dice there. Those have to be pretty incredible. So, folks, there's going to be some new Armored Wolf products coming along. And we're going to be featuring some of those on the, the, the Twitch channel here over the course of time. But there's also Armored Wolf dice. Yes, there are Armored Wolf dice. Hey, Rex, how you doing? Let's see, Twitch, you just got a decent amount of three miniatures glued together and some of them primed. Uh, Twitch, I'm glad that you were able to get that going. I sadly, ugh, I couldn't tell you when I'm going to be able to print anything. It's, I think it's a while from now, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's going to be at least uh, weeks before I can try printing anything. Uh, fish face, face Frank, sorry, <laughs> that's, that's not something I can say ten times fast. Boy, Fish Face, uh, there's a bunch of other things I could tell you just right off the top of my head for a whole bunch of substitute things. Uh, the only thing I could think of is Mantic. <laughs> and there's Pragmatic Shark. So Pragmatic Shark, is that great mimes think alike? Yeah, just like Pragmatic Shark said, that's the only thing I can possibly think of just right off the top of my head. Astrovox. Ah, oh boy, Astrovox. Uh, what does Archvillain Games have going right now? I, I, just, I really wish that I could sign up for their thing, but it's just, well, also not being able to print stuff is not helpful <laughs> when you belong to printing STL things. I think we're all cut up. So, Rex, I hope that you're doing well. I hope that things are a little less crazy, maybe. A little less crazy now. All right. Do we need any more? Let's look at this here. There's any more gold stuff anywhere here. It's kind of funny. After doing all the TMM stuff, this is the first time I've painted the non-metallic metal stuff in, what, a week and a half or something like that? This is pretty wild. We've been really focused in on the, the TMM, haven't we? Now you can see how that's mixing. Look at how that's mixing. That's the whole point of the pre-glaze, right? It's something we can use. It's something we can build off of. Whereas you do the, the Zenithal stuff, right? Well, you're mostly just going to paint over it. Uh, let's see. So fish people. Uh, Astrovox, it was... Cadmium yellow deep, but it, it, as you can see, it started to mix together. So it was a little less cadmium yellow deep and more everything else. There was definitely some, you could see there's some terra rosa getting in there, but you could also see some of the umber getting in there, right? Where it starts to look a little bit like raw sienna a little bit. Now here again, dry brushing, right? Less is more, and more is way too much. So let's look how it's picking up that darker color there. Look at how it's picking that stuff up. It means we got to go back over here to the palette. We got to get uh, uh, some fresh stuff here. Look at that. It's mixing again with it. That's the whole point of this. That is the entire point of this. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun. Thank you so much for that follow, Timmy. Thank you so much, Gandalf. Appreciate it. Hello, little hobbit. I think that's a my. Are you a Maiar? I think that's a Maiar. <laughs> it's like, who, who's that old dude? Where'd he come from? Thank you so much, Timmy, for that follow. 
there are yeah it's uh, I guess I don't know if this is from a uh, storm sender or wild Asc maybe this is storm sender right because they also did wild ascent to and and they'll be <laughs> they'll be <laughs> they'll be like, why why did you already forget but you know me with miniature companies. There's 20,000 different things that I'm trying to remember. And one company's thing is another company's thing. So I am not really good on names. As you as you well know, names are not my thing. So I think this could be from Storm Sender, Oliver. I think it could be. I'm pr Yeah, I think it is. I, I, it's got to be. It has to. Look at this. Look at, so I can take this and... So mix this with the color that I'm throwing in there now. And again, it all has to be messy before it can be neat. It's just kind of the way of things. Uh, thanks so much, Pragmatic Shark. I appreciate that. Yep, that's uh, there we go, folks. So if you got questions, if you have questions, there's the people that can answer your questions did I not tell you they would be here I told you they would be so folks direct all questions to those gents right there now what we're going to start doing is bringing in some of the white here into the wings but again we're just do doing the dry brush thing right doing the dry brush thing then we kind of we start to come back in here. We bring in even more middle tones. We can start bringing in some of those blues, some greens. Wow, look at see how that that asphaltum is starting to mix with the feathers right there. But it all happens from the pre-glaze and using this little bit of a dry brush over the top of it. Astrovox, uh, there's so many different things it can do. There's so many different things that it can do. It, it makes a great skin tone. You're going to see a ton of it on those those pirate figures, right? Our, our core series of Umbar. We're definitely going to do a lot of that. And not just on the, the skin tones, but even on... Because they're going to be walking around well, on pirate ships, basically, right? So a lot of the, the deck and, and the wood and all that other kind of stuff also going to have that same... A lot of the, well, probably Van Dyke Brown. The Asphaltum, it just, it's got such a depth to it. It really does. Oh, I can, yes, Astrovox. You'll be seeing that on those Warg Riders. You'll be seeing that on those Warg Riders for sure. Let's see, Promatic Shark. Oh, you got the oils now. First Project will be some Swamp Bases. My, no, actually, Pragmatic Shark, I've definitely used the water effect over the oils. Now, uh, that was the, the the secret weapon water effect, and what's the heavy gloss gel? And I think I've also used the Green Stuff World UV resin. Now, again, with, with the oils, once it's cured, I mean, it's it's cured, right? That, that, that stuff ain't going nowhere's. Oh, let's see. Oh, that's the one that the same one that you got available. That's good. But yeah, I haven't uh, I haven't noticed any because obviously, like here, you know, this is uh, so this was done with the oils and the secret weapon snow has the water effects in it, and then the icicles. Well, they have the uh, heavy gel, right? That has the heavy gel in it. All right, I'll catch you later in a bit, Rhapsody. Uh, Mikey, I'm, <laughs> as someone who hasn't had a new Easterling miniature in, what, 15 years, I'm happy. Everybody seems to be really upset, but then should we expect anything less? Are, are they necessarily the most fantastic miniatures ever? Eh, pretty much no Lord of the Rings miniature is going to be the most fantastic ever because they're kind of, they're a little bit trapped in the imagery, right? And, of course, they all hated the profiles because they all hate the Black Dragon Knights and the overpriced and all this other kind of stuff. And I just I don't understand why it's like that. 
Uh, I hope uh, pragmatic sharp. I hope it goes good. I hope it goes well. Yeah, gallo fire. It's just uh, it's really interesting. To see it. we haven't even started bringing in some of the the lights yet, right? And by cleaning the brushes here, when we refer to that, all we're doing is literally just taking a paper towel here, because it's going to be really hard to do the dry brushy thing if you got a whole bunch of liquid in this. And by the way, when it comes to the thinner, look at that. that's a bottle cap, and I've been working with that for a week, so we don't need lots of that. Astrovox, that's why we oppose the opposable thumb when we're painting. When we're painting, this is like a hideous evolutionary travesty right here. We don't need this. We could literally just use these fingers because we want a nice light stroke, right? A nice light brush stroke. Now I'm going to take this brilliant yellow pail here. And we're going to take even more of it out of that brush. And we're going to see what else we can throw in here as far as some of our lights go. Ah, Lord Dave, aren't the true metallic oils? Uh, I thought you know, they could do the non-metallic stuff and all that really well, but it's kind of cool what they can do with the TMM, huh? Well, it was, uh, well, this was <laughs> as neat as it was when we did this one right here with the TMM. Now, this is the one that I did last night. Now, I have to be a little bit careful. It, it is still on the wet side. That was olive green. Look, look at this olive green mixed with the uh was that the interference green look look at that bright green look at it almost looks like it's red it almost looks like it's red then it shifts to green look at that red green shift even though it's all olive green so that was really cool that was really cool yeah it is pretty cool huh lord dave the things that did it, the possibilities that it opens up. It just opens up unbelievable possibilities. You know, let's get some more of the yellow up here. Now, of course, I meant to actually have a picture up here with some Lazy Squire games, but you can check out, I think I've got at least one or two Lazy Squire games miniatures that are saved as highlights. And there's definitely at least four or five that are YouTube videos. So be sure to go check out the YouTube channel for those Lazy Squire painting sessions. Yeah, Oliver, you have to figure they're probably thin to somewhere between 50 to 60% of what the original thickness of the paint is. Maybe, maybe a smidge more. Maybe even a smidge more. Uh, Nessie, there's a lot of figures to choose from, aren't there? With the Lazy Squire, there's a lot of figures to choose from. As in, a lot to choose from. Let me see. Uh, so yeah, Lord Dave, uh, what, what's interesting... Oh, and uh, I have those interference powders coming this way. So the TMM stuff is going to take a whole new direction when those arrive. I have a feeling. Something tells me. Because there's there's like 30 or 40 colors available with those interference powdered pigments. Pretty much almost anything is possible, I think. All right, what are we going to do down here? What do we want to do down here? We are going to take... Where's our micro filbert? And we're going to take some of this Prussian blue over here. A wee bit of this Prussian blue. And we are going to start to dabble with some of this here, too. We'll start to dabble with some of this blue. Don't think that there's just too much stuff going on here to try and squeeze in any sort of freehand. So we'll just be satisfied with throwing in some blue here. And we'll try and get some of that also into the, the wings because, well, proximity, right? Proximity, reflected color, all that sort of good stuff. Uh, hey, Ryder. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Hope that you're doing well. And Oh, yeah, it's Monday. I completely forgot what day it was. I almost said, hey, happy Friday. 
I'm not, you think I'm joking. You think I'm joking. I'm not. I almost said Happy Friday. I'm lucky I can remember my own name most of these days. Uh, Astrovox, it, it will depend on some of them. Now, you actually hear the Prussian blue, the Egyptian violet, the asphaltum, and the ivory black, and these two, because my containers ran out, I just took them out of the tube. I, I just do that. It's more for people that are starting out because they, they can have a hard time with piling on too much paint or making things too thin on the palette. These guys, though, the interference colors and the iridescent, you have to thin them down first because out of the tube, they're just crumbly. It, it's sort of like dried, moist bread. <laughs> I mean, it's just crumbly, and you can't do anything with it. So that that is uh, those you kind of have to thin down. The other stuff, maybe not so much. I just do it less and less these days because, well... Hello, uh, little hobbits. Spark my gun. I've used the oils often enough to be able to work with that, right? Hello, little hobbit. Thank you so much, Dr. Painting, for that follow. He's like, hello, Meyer. He's like, what? I am not a Meyer. It like, looks like a Meyer. Ah, uh, yes. Got to do the puppet shows. Got to do the puppet shows. Let's see. Ah, uh, you can't quit me. Uh, very envious, very envious of that lost, uh, the Lost Kingdom stuff because uh, they've got the Bretonians and the, the Tomb King stuff going on right now. That's um, that is some amazing stuff. That is really some amazing stuff. Might even just toss a little bit of the blue up here. Again, all of this stuff, none of these are final choices, right? None of it's final. Uh, and Nessie, uh, I wonder, they don't make uh, fades, right? They would open up like a curtain or something like that. Uh, I, wonder, <laughs> do, I wonder if they, anybody created like a fade. Maybe I guess it's something that you could uh, download or something like that, like a gif of a curtain opening or something crazy like that. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll just maybe make those gloves there. That might either be skin or leather. We'll just get that away from gold right here, and now we're going to start to throw some different colors here into this. And again, look at how it's just mixing. But as Nessie knows, if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. We can't have all this just being the same color down here either. That's why we're going to try and chuck some of this, well, it's basically a little bit of Terra Rosa down in here. A little bit of Terra Rosa. More of a demonic look to it, with the fiery kind of lighting this way. And there will be more of the Lazy Squire slash Storm Thunder figures uh, coming this way. And we're going to try some more of these, I guess you could say dual color scheme concepts like this, where we try the same thing in a couple of different color schemes. Now we're going to get us just a little bit of reflected light on that chin. Just a smidge. Look at this. We got Trasharama in the house. Ah, so Trasharama, how are things going there with uh, with all that crazy situation with the water and the electricity and all that sort of stuff? Uh, is it back to 100% yet? Yeah, Cobra Snake, I, I'm i really curious what kind of stuff's going to be coming this way. I, If you go back and look at some of the old uh, Twitch sessions and some of the old YouTube lives, uh, I did some other Storm Sunder and Wild Ascent figures. Um, I'm, there's, uh, I think there's going to be some really interesting things, uh, kind of a lot like this here. Ah, it's back to 100% for trash. That's great. That is good. So so no more boiling water, none of that kind of crazy stuff. That sounds good. Glad to hear that. And hopefully the folks at Reaper have had maybe a little bit of a respite so that they can just sort of start locking in on the the Repo ec Repo Reaper Expo, which is what, two weeks from now? Right? Uh 
It's not this weekend, but the weekend after this. Uh, Trasherama, now there's been no official profile on them except for the, well, obviously lower armor, two attacks, and fight skill four. I think that's about the only hard information that we've got. I, I was, hey, I'm happy to have something new. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't had anything new figure-wise for Lord of the Rings outside of characters for, I don't know, 15 years. So I'm all good with that. And most people seem to hate everything about the Easterlings anyway, so when they all complain about them, I don't really care. I will, well, of course, and we just had him out here. Where did he go? My whole army is based on a Black Dragon theme, and you are just adding a whole new unit that's based on Black Dragons. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> I'm super thrilled about that. Hey, I'll, I'll take that any day. I know some folks weren't necessarily thrilled about that. They're saying that they're getting kind of Warhammery and beefy or whatever, but maybe they're Strength 4. Maybe they're burly or something like that. So maybe there's a reason why. I don't know. But I am. I know why. I'm adding just a couple of more lights right there on the top of that. See, to make that just a little, little bit more metal-y, right? A little more metal-y. So, Trash, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty stoked here because some of those Oathmark figures Hello, have arrived. Spark my ganja. Oh, thank you so much for that follow-up pleasure pleasurable pain. Well, speaking of Slanish, there's one of your chaos got. Hello, everybody. Spark my ganja. It's like, what did I tell you about coming back here? Get out of here. You're still a Maya. That's what I said. Um, so trash, yeah, we've got some Oathmark. We've got the Goblin Wolf Riders and the uh, the Heavy Armored Dwarves. Those have come in. And I'm looking forward to, uh, well, at least on the Heavy Armored Dwarves, I, I think I'm going to use them. One as a khaz doom faction, and then the other box as maybe Iron Hills. Iron Hills, since... Uh, well, even if somebody was doing STL files on goat riders and stuff, I wouldn't be able to print them right now. So I think I might just have to sculpt those, <laughs> which won't be easy, but we'll, we'll do that. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my ganja. <laughs> oh, let's see. I'm a goofy goober, too. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for that file, and Gandalf appreciates it. I am not a goofy goober. Maybe I am. Fly, you fools. There goes fast Gandalf. Oh, trash. Uh, <laughs> I th it was with Rhapsody Studios. That's right. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't do assembly streams because uh, the black speech of Mordor would definitely be uttered way too many times. Uh, it would, uh, it, it would become a <laughs> not quite so family friendly at all. But what I will maybe I might be doing the basing side of things on those I don't know. But yeah, <laughs> uh, people have asked me about assembly streams and I'm like, well, just ask Kathy what kind of things happen here when I'm trying to assemble miniatures. But we will be painting them on stream. We'll certainly be painting them on stream. In fact, it might be the Saturday challenge. Yeah, Trat, let's see, let's, uh, you know, let's show you some of the things, uh, you know, let's get all the way down here. So there's our Mandalorians. I just finished the last one, and I don't know if you heard the thing about the mica flake slash interference powders that are coming this way. So, yeah, that that's, uh, I've got those powders coming this way. I'm really looking forward to that, and I'm going to do the same kind of, uh, for the Kazadoom dwarves, going to use the same bases and do the same kind of lighting like that. I thought that could be really interesting on the Kazadoom Dwarves. So, yeah, what, <laughs> what I would need is, what was that, uh, who was the guy that, that do, used to do the Late Late Show? Was it Craig Kilborn, maybe? I don't know, it wasn't him, maybe it was. I don't remember who it was. But he would, every time he said a naughty word, 
there would be like a flag that would be superimposed over his mouth and there would it would say something like Tootsie Fruits or something. Craig Ferguson, there we go, thanks. Yeah, we'd have to have something like that. And basically all you would ever see is flags and Tootsie Fruits. That's all you would see. Six hours of that. Oh, thanks, Dila. Yeah, I hope that you're having yourself a decent day. That it's uh is it super dry over there still, I'm assuming. Cause it really seems like it's been dry. Yeah, steal it. We went with the Prussian blue. We went with the Prussian blue again. You you best not uh, upset the Prussians by keeping them off the pallet for too long. Uh, they were not on the pallet at all for that one video, and they just they just marched down to the pallet. They just said, "Nope, we're here." So actually, that wasn't really my choice. That was just the Prussians came in. Uh, let me see. Oh yeah, Cobra Snake. Uh, I've only ever tried to assemble one war jack, and that was the last war jack. We will we won't be treating ourselves to that again ever, for sure. So Stila, the and what's weird is that this was I just brushed down that same primer again, literally the same primer. Brushed it on, no problem. And of course, that's that's your one shot, right? You airbrush it on, and it works just fine. I can only imagine that with MIG ammo, they would want everybody to use an airbrush for everything. So it doesn't surprise me that it would it, that it wants to be used in an airbrush if it says MIG ammo on it. Ah, trash. Well, that's good, but you can always. Uh, well, you can always watch the highlight of that and see what we did on it. Now, do you have the Green Stuff World Dwarf Texture Roller? Because, man, it sure made the basing on those guys real easy. Oh, you try painting one tomorrow, but it looks super fine with the air. But, yeah, it's just crazy, isn't it, Stila? Isn't it just bizarre? So we add some more white. Eh, you know what? What the heck? We'll just start to really hit some lights on these things. If we need to tone it down again, we can always do that. I think I need... Oh, yeah. Good grief. We need some over here, too. Uh, so, now, Trash, how many... Uh, how, now, how many uh, Mines of Moria Gabos do you have? Or is it just going to be uh, not necessarily Mines of Moria, but... Uh, for more like a, a DAD fantasy type thing. Back to our. Let's see, what to do sound? <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh yeah, the one centimeter gaps on some of those old metals. metals. Yeah, they're. I only ever tried doing that one. I just. They're, well, let's put it this way. Now that I've been sculpting here, and when it takes me less time to sculpt this from scratch than it does to put together just a couple of 28 millimeter figures, that that's when I and I still have to end up re-sculpting them because of all the kinds of weird things. That's when I just start. Uh, that's when the hackles are raised. <laughs> when you want to see the angriest of angry bears. You just, you do something like that. You will see the angry bear. Now the, the, the back over here, I'll throw a couple of lights in there, but is it really necessary to go bonkers with highlights there in an area that we'd almost rather be insignificant and in shadow? Probably not. So when, when it comes again to the brush cleaner, it's very basic. It's just from Windsor Newton. And the great thing is, is that it works just fine for acrylic paint. It, you know, no, no vapors, non-hazardous. You wouldn't want to drink it, but then I'm not quite sure why you'd really want to be entertaining that thought anyways. But it is pretty darn harmless, and it actually smells really good. It kind of smells really good. 
you will probably want to rinse your hands afterwards because I mean it does take away paint I mean, to me I don't care if paint comes off the handle of a brush other folks get a little bit more upset about that kind of thing I think you can tell that I really don't care here We got some of the Vallejo Earth texture. I can only imagine how much fun that was. I know that you've been wanting to get uh, more into the basing side of things. So hopefully that kind of makes that part a little bit easier. Maybe not too much work to get some fun things out of it. We will take our blending brush to do the same thing a couple places like so, right? Like so. And I'm looking right over here. What the, can we do something here to bring out some details minus the whole adding highlights thing? Well, let's see if we can. That means we got to add some darks. And, well, look at this. We just happen to have Egyptian violet sitting over here. That's pretty dark. Let's use that. Can you see this? I think so. Oof, yes, that most devil. <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, when you want to make things darker, how's about a little Egyptian violet? That'll get the job done. That'll certainly make it nice and dark. Might even use it here on the crown a little bit. But I'm already visualizing all this with the the object source lighting kind of coming this way. So it's going to be more of an off-camera object source lighting like our Moria stuff was. All that stuff was off-camera for the most part, right? Ah, uh, Cobra. Actually, uh, I haven't uh, I haven't played Blood Bowl since 2008 or nine, maybe. Probably 2008 or nine. Probably actually at a tournament, maybe. It's the last time I played it. Uh, part of it was the the leagues leagues kind of folded up and the, to me uh, the the only two games that I really play these days as far as your your miniatures type games is going to be Lord of the Rings and Bolt Action. Now I, I know there's been a huge uh, massive change to all the rules basically uh, to all the, almost all the rules in Blood Bowl have changed since I last played. And and I understand. I mean, it's, it, you can't just keep things necessarily exactly the same uh, for a game like that. I can understand why maybe things get altered over the course of time. Oh, geez, a cobra snake. They've added new stats. There's like a passing stat now. There's apparently there is a a new team with that's just black orcs and goblins with thick skull <laughs> so yeah there's there's been a lot of stuff that, that's going on with blood bowl uh, especially over the last couple of years they've really changed the whole game around hey Thowler how you doing nice to see you hopefully you're having yourself a good Monday night slash Tuesday morning there's still an hour and 20 minutes of Monday left here as we're going to add some more darks this away. Yeah, the mostly, well, here, the, there was basically no Blood Bowl leagues we could have played in. They all just kind of disintegrated. The game stores pretty much closed, or any game stores anywhere near us all closed. So that kind of put that out of action. So it's been a long, long time since I played Blood Bowl. That, uh, that's why the focus has definitely been on stuff like the Lord of the Rings. Uh, Memoir 44 was a board game that I really liked. But uh, that is that is definitely something you have to play with another person because it is all about the cards and such. And that uh, that is not something you can just do by yourself. I think the the last edition that I was playing with regularly was Living Rule Book Six, which of course is long gone now. That doesn't exist anymore. I think when I first started to play it, 
you're looking all the way back at the first to score three touchdowns wins. I do believe those were the days. As we keep working with this Egyptian violet here, we're, again, we're restoring some really heavy darks in here. Not just to bring in some darks, but also sharpen up some edges here. Like, like here, there's just, again, a mold line cruised right through here. So we are trying to sharpen up some edges that got fuzzed up a little bit when we were doing our filing away the mold line. I mean, that happened. All the Song of Ice and Fire miniatures, we did the same thing there. Because, again, they're sort of like this. Your one-piece production figures, right, that are very sturdy. Uh, let me see. Uh, I thought we were doing good. Uh, just realizing that I need to re-sleeve a few thousand cards. That uh, how, how much is that going to cost, Thowler? How much is that going to cost? Uh, so, so Rex, if you've got continuing leagues, the if you're just playing the game kind of more just at an open style or whatever, definitely less change there. But if you've got continuing leagues, it basically means the league has to vote to dump all of their old stuff and start all over again. Uh, or or just not uh, play, and that's why some leagues have uh, fallen apart. Because there's people that just don't want to be starting all over again. Uh, that's uh, $217 in sleeves. Yikes, Stowler, that's nuts. Ouch, Stowler, that sounds painful. Uh, so, so Rex, are you playing an online edition, or are you guys playing the physical edition? Because that, that sounds like an online league right there. Okay, let's uh, pop in more. Okay, we're just going to keep going here. Bringing out some, some sharpness there. So all of this stuff starts to get sharpened up more and more and more. Yeah, I think the 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 biggest league that I ever participated in, I think there was well, there were sixteen people, but by the end of the season half of the coaches had either left the league or been kicked out for cheating, so it was more like a nine person league by the end of the season. Yeah, I think that I think we ended the league with nine people, maybe by the end of the season. My my experiences with Blood Bowl have definitely not been... They've been somewhat rough. <laughs> they have not been super positive, unfortunately. Uh, let's see. Live in a mega city. League spans about eight games. To well, that sounds really good, Rex. That, that sounds amazing. Hopefully... Uh, Hopefully everybody appreciates what they've got there, because that is definitely a rare thing, for sure. Yeah, it looks like there's some gemstones over here, so just for funsies here, I'm going to... I mean, i got this Prussian blue sitting over here. How's about we do something with these besides just uh, let them be another shade of gold? It's not like you can really see too much of those anyways. We'll, we'll go back in there and we'll hit them again. Uh, let's see. Uh, down to 20. Yeah, that's... Uh, I would imagine that's going to be really be putting the putting the kibosh and a whole lot of things like that. We're going to go back to our... I think the one, the last few folks I know here that still have a physical league going, they just, they just went to the online version so that they could still play their games and not have to be doing other things. We're just going to get some, a little bit of a light on the bottom of that and then we'll have to also come back over here to our cadmium yellow light. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I mean for us 
maintaining at least a six person if, if you don't have six it's just there's it's not viable and there were many times where that six person was not exactly the most reliable they were kind of a fringe person and they were always the one most likely to kind of put the league down into uh, five coaches, which was non-viable. See that? Look, we just put a little bit of light highlight on the other side of that. Boom. All good to go. And we'll do the same here. Like that. Now, one of the nice things they did with Lord of the Rings was to create the the, the battle companies thing. That was uh, that almost in some ways made it was almost like uh, what would you say Mordheim for Lord of the Rings. It was almost a little bit like that. I have a uh, courtesy of some of our generous uh, followers on Twitch and chat members. I have actually the, all of the supplements now including the battle companies and as folks know we have some serious major plans for some Lord of the Rings campaign stuff going on and at some point I do want to incorporate the battle companies here because you can essentially create characters and it would be fun to have some some characters based on the uh, most frequent folks in the chat. That would be a very fun thing to be able to do. We're respecting the umber, by the way. We are respecting the umber. Because what I'd like to do here is throw in something like this. And we'll do the same on this side, too. Yeah, same on that side. Actually, there's a that actually swings. Okay, yeah. So we're just gonna continue that little shape there, and it is you know that that whole idea of light, dark, light. It's uh, very much a non-metallic metal, also a true metallic metal thing. Doesn't matter if it's true metallic, non-metallic. You need that sort of light, dark, light shape. We did that. Where's our some of our mandos here? We certainly did that. Like here, you know, you have the light, dark light on these on that little gauntlet right there. Also, same thing on the like. Now that that's a true metallic metal right there. Man, look at the, isn't that crazy. So all last week, all last week we were doing our Mandalorians here, and all that is it's metallic paint, but it has color to it. And I was mixing the interference paints with regular oil paints. Uh, so White Wolf, uh, now did you hear the, the suggestion, and this is what we did here in the summertime, was either it's gallon jugs of water and or two liter bottles, whatever, you know, your, your soda, whatever. You you take those. You put, Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun jar. You put water in there, and you also welcome Stark. Thank you so much, Stark, for that follow. Can I say hello, little hobbits? Spark my gun jar still a mire. So the, you take the water, you freeze it, and you can either put it in front of a fan, which is pointed at you, or you could just literally have those little jars of water at your feet or something like that, and you'd be surprised at what a difference it makes. Hello, little hobbits. Spark my gun jar. Uh, the Seda Seton, thank you so much for that follow. Gano says, fly, you fools. See how fast he is? Look at how fast he is. That is fast Gandalf. He is the fastest Maiar in all of Middle Earth. Well, only because of Shadow Facts. Yeah, let's uh, bring in some more of this. Okay, we're going to take our. It's a little bit of ivory black, a little bit of the indigo there. Remember we said we can bring out as much or as little detail in these feathers. We can put all of the, we we did a lot of the lighter colors, right? Now maybe we can paint some see like here, right there along the spine of that feather. Let's throw in a couple more darks here. All of a sudden the feathers don't look quite so 
playing anymore. We've got even more detail going on in these feathers. And like we've said before, for whatever reason, it, it is even true with the with the acrylic stuff, right? For whatever reason, that the lighter colors, they're always going to be a little bit thicker. It's hard to get thin lines with those. That's when you sort of come back with your darker colors, right? And you create, you make those lines thinner. Uh, looks like White Wolf has an interesting story about the Lord of the Rings movies. We need to know. Because, yeah, well, you, you're certainly much closer to it than we, we are, that's for sure. You are way closer to it than us. Hobbiton is way closer to you. Now, I'm, I'm still have to remember not to get in here and do too much with light stuff. Right, I, I can do a little bit here. I think I can mess around a little. Nope, nope. First, we're going to go darker. Yes, yeah, we'll go darker first. When in doubt, make things darker. How's about some Van Dyke brown? Some of our ivory, but and we'll just we'll start out making things darker and then make some things lighter. Uh, let's see. Oh, he was a senior sculptor at Weta Studio. Uh, he worked on everything they made. Wow, White Wolf, that's uh, that is uh, pretty darn incredible. Boy, that now that is a person that I would like to spend I don't know the next ten years asking questions to. Uh, Pierce makes. We started on this four hours twenty two minutes ago, and all it was was just literally a miniature covered in uh, primer. That's it. So we started four hours twenty two minutes ago. Uh, start to finish. It, it's the magic of oils. It's a uh, very similar when we're working on stuff like this, right? Usually something like this will spend four or five-ish hours on it again, start to finish. That is the, the magic of the oil paints, of course. Boy, yeah, that would uh, that is a person that I would like to talk to for a long, long time because there's just uh, so many amazing things that I would love to know that the materials, the techniques... Yeah, so Pete, now you can actually go back and watch all of our, all of the old sessions here. They're they're basically almost safe like a YouTube channel, and you can see them all. But all these things, <coughs> all these things were kind of painted in one session here. So you know, let's uh, get down to some of our newer things. So we've got our, uh, yeah, let's get down here to our. Whoops, sorry. So our Moria army here, all of the goblins there. Those were painted on one stream, and the Balrog was painted on one stream. So all of that painted on one stream. The Shadow Stalkers, that was three streams. So about maybe 16, 17 hours to paint that group right there. Scions of Flame, same thing, about 16, 17-ish hours, something like that to get those painted. We also have our Witch King here. That was all painted on one stream. Uh, so Stark, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with some other other miniatures, but so this is your Lord of the Rings scale. So as you can see, it's probably, what would you say, 40 millimeter scale, 35 to 40 mil scale, something like that. Uh, let's see, here's your, uh, do we have ourselves a, a sister of battle here? So yeah, yeah, probably 35, 40 mil scale, something like that. Something along those lines. And we just, all of our armies painting here. We, we, we sculpted, actually painted these guys on the channel here. We've, uh, we've even sculpted some busts for ourselves. So we sculpted this a couple of Thursdays ago, and then we painted this on Friday. So yeah, Thursday through Friday, a couple of streams, got that sculpted and painted. And let's see some. Oh, here's our. Uh, here's another one of our one stream things here. So uh, Prinkles, the Imperial War Kitty. You will worship me. Yes, because I am a god. Yeah. So we, and of course we painted some very large things here. Where's Where's Mr. Giggles here? There we go. So we painted all of these. I think this is about a month 
three weeks ago to a month ago, we painted each of these. Uh, all that this guy on one stream, Mr. Giggles on another stream. And then you can go back and, of course, since this is the Cavalry Channel, of course, I think we've painted at least six of these Cavalry units of various types. All, uh, you know, each, each stream we paint one unit. The base, the, the riders, the horses, all the stuff. Yeah, let's go back with the... Do I need to get some lights? Yeah, I'm going to keep going with some lights down there. Why not? Why not? We'll just take some of this brilliant yellow pale here, and I'm looking right at the end ends of these guys here. Just a smidge more of a light there. Oh, thanks, Dork. Thanks. Uh, yeah, lately what, what I've been doing kind of as a Saturday challenge because I need to have so many of these Lord of the Rings armies done for battle reports coming up that I just basically say, okay, how many of these Lord of the Rings figures can I paint in about a 10-hour Saturday session? So the session that we did on Saturday is I think we painted up a dozen uh, Knights of Minas Tirith and we did our true metallic metals on there. So we did sky, earth, non-metallic metal, but also with, uh, well, with our oils and metallic paints. And here's uh, we painted these uh, just last week. So this was uh, we painted all these guys up last week. That was another exercise in the true metallic metals right there. Really love those. So you can go back and watch all of those. Uh, so Drift, their video battle reports. Now what you can do here is check out, I actually have four of them uh, on bolt action. So here, this is from our Blood at Arras battle report right here. That is the Bridge to Nubium battle report. And we're actually going to be using, well, they, the, the physical natural terrain is going to be very similar. So again, there's uh, some of our Blood at Arras terrain. So I did four bolt action battle reports. And you can go back and watch those right now. What I want to do is the same thing for Lord of the Rings. Oh, thanks, Drift. Now, the, the caveat there is that I want it to be more of a campaign-driven setting. So instead of just, oh, look, it's Easterlings versus Dwarves again. The That's why we're using the War of the Ring board game as almost like a strategic map. So some of the event cards, character cards, that will not only decide who is fighting who, but who might be leading those armies, where those armies will be fighting, under what circumstances. Uh, Stark, just like Armored Wolf says, uh, well, and it's the same for Armored Wolf, to us, a workday start a light work day is about 12 hours that's a light work day heavy work day is closer to 18 hours we we've had a we between the two of us we've had a number of those uh very heavy work days of 24 hours that's happened yeah, I, I like the idea of getting the, the lighter blue in here too hey lady b how you doing uh, uh, well, as as imagined, I guess it's very, very hot down there. So hopefully you are not boiling too much. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, good drift. Yeah, um, I was definitely, well, I have 17 different bolt action armies that I'm working on. So I, I definitely wanted to go all the way through. Uh, my, well, a friend of mine, he will, when we were still doing this stuff, uh, actually check out the blog too because there's bolt action battle reports there. Uh, he had Finns and I had the Russians. I also had a, a German army that we did a Barbarossa series of battle reports too. Now those were just pictures. So yeah, drift. the The idea is that again, imagine you know, you're using something like well, it's a, it's not quite the same, but you're using something like an Axis and Allies or whatever, 
as the general strategic thing, and depending what happens there, you basically would play a game of bolt action, maybe based on what happened there, or whatever events happened, or that sort of thing, the composition of the units. Actually, the the, the pictorial battle reports uh, that we filmed at my friend's house were very fun because he did the vaping thing, and when he would fire a Katusha or if I fired off an 88 or a heavy howitzer or something like that, he would actually, if it hit something and blew it up, he would do the vaping thing, and <laughs> we would take a couple of pictures of the smoke-shrouded, uh, well, like the Russian church. Oh, well, I'm glad that you do it. You, oh, right, that's, uh, that's making me hungry there, actually. That, uh, that sounds very yummy. Food sounds good. Uh, yeah, Drift, we also wanted to do with the Finns and the Russians, we wanted to do the Sausage Wars. And we actually had that food cart, you know, that the field kitchen set up. And once the Russians got to within 24 inches of that field kitchen, they had to start rolling morale tests. And with every six inches they got closer to it, they had a minus one to that morale test. And if they failed it, they just basically br broke and ran towards the uh, field kitchen. Oh, we also had another thing that we were going to do where the Russians would have to cross either an icy river or an icy lake or something like that. And they only had so many turns to cross the lake before the Finns' heavy artillery started firing into the ice. Uh, what was that? The Bay of Finland, right? They did that. The Russians got the idea to come across over, over the ice, and the Finns said, Really? That looks fun. <laughs> Now you're going to go swimming, and they fired at the ice, and uh, some guys went swimming in full gear, which probably didn't go so well. Yeah, sorry to hear about that lady beat. That does not sound like much fun either. Actually, maybe uh, going for a little swim in the ice sounds like more fun than that. But we did the same thing that we were doing right on this side with our darker colors here. We'll do the same on this side now. Here, let's pick up some of this. Here we are. Just, just a couple little, again, some strands of whatever. I don't know. Because we, we really can't go much lighter here. We certainly can go darker at a certain point, right? What do we always say? Just look, just make it darker. When in doubt, make it darker. But we also still have our blending brush. And we can even kind of cheat and get a little more of our little strands here. We'll do the same on this side. Same over here. Cheat just a little bit. We talk about the edge contrast all the time, right? Of just a few. We can't have every single feather drawn. If we have every single feather drawn out on there, it's just going to be crazy. You, you let a few of those be featured. Now, where's our sculpting here? Where's our bird that we're sculpting? And it's going to be the same thing here when we go to paint this. And this is, we'll be paint, uh, sculpting some more of these on Thursday. So when we get in all of the, the feather texture right here, we're not going to just, every single bit of texture on that feather, not going to paint that in. Some of it's just going to, we're going to let that kind of sit in the recesses, right? We have to bring out every last strand of it. That'll be just a bit too much. Now I'm thinking that I'm going to take some Terra Rosa in here and we will lighten up some of this on this side. Here we go. Yep. Remember, if we're going to throw in some of our little green foliage bits here, we want to have some kind of warmth there. And look at even also contrast to some of the green that we brought in earlier. We want that on the bottom over here. We got some of already on the top there. That's that's all good. That is all good. Let's separate some of our 
Tio Rossi even on the wings, right? Color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere. We're taking this. We're going to bring it up here. We'll just let that get blended a little bit. Again, any brush can be a blending brush. I mean, sometimes, even if it has paint on it, it can still be a blending brush. Now, what I would really love to do, boy, is right here over the eyes. See, I've got the orange. We have that little bit of blue right there contrasting with the orange, so it's more of a color contrast. There's no difference in the lightness of those. The, the value of them is the same as far as light and dark. It's a color difference here. I'm tempted to throw a little bit of the lighter blue in here. I just I don't want one of these to get lighter than the other. I didn't necessarily want to highlight this because uh, otherwise, well, then why are these lighter, right? Because that is underneath these. But I'm just looking for a little smidge more separation here, maybe maybe a bit more. I don't know, I might have to thin this down a bit. Can you see? Yeah, you can see that. Right there at the corner of the eye. And I think it did what I wanted it to. And I might even throw just a smidge more there. And so now you can sort of see the eye lid there a little bit more. We brought up one thing by knocking down another thing. It just, it's, it's the way. This is the way. <laughs> this is the way. Now we got this light blue again. Figure out what is going to happen here on this. I'm just saying that that's a sleeve right there. We also got to figure out what is going on here with the with the hand. It looks like there's almost some kind of a string that's sort of coming across the fingers. We'll figure that out. Take my blending brush here. And yeah, let's we'll just oh look at that. See? Nice and easy. Knock that down, get that nice and spread out. Nice and spread out. There we go. We do still have some feathers in here. I just noticed uh I thought these actually were were part of the gold. They were not. They were feathers. So we make the changes once again. We make changes as we need to sometimes. Uh, the writer, I haven't heard anything about a new Balrog miniature. The only new large creature thing that I know about is the tree beard and some of the new Ents. Uh, so I, can't, I can't imagine they would be coming... Well, maybe they could be coming out with a new Balrog, but uh, that's been redone more recently than, say, the Treebeard has. Uh, I don't know anything about a new Balrog miniature. All I know is that there's the new Treebeard and the new Easterlings coming up. And that is it. Well, let's, uh, yeah, I have not seen any pictures for that uh, Armored Wolf. Did you see anything about a new Balrog miniature? Because the uh, Armored Wolf always kind of alerts me whenever there's, uh, whenever there's, especially anything new Lord of the Rings, he always lets me know. So the only the only things I know of that are new again are the Easterlings and the uh, the and Tree Beard, well and then Forge World has new just tree tree ends. Oh thanks Dila, thanks so much. Yeah that's definitely uh definitely a different thing. Uh, let's see. And there's still more goblins to go. I've got, uh, well, there's seven more that are all prepped and ready to go. But well, I was kind of hoping maybe by Saturday to have a whole bunch of Khazadum dwarves. 
ready to go and maybe we could do the object source lighting thing on those Kazadoom dwarves. Well, <laughs> they won't be Kazadoom dwarves, they'll be Oathmark dwarves, but they'll be Oathmark Kazadoom dwarves. Yeah, let's uh, go back into our blues right here again, just to bring in some more light. Now, do I have any of my, I think I have a, just a little bit of my quick dry white that hasn't gotten, well, something else ended up stuck in there. Okay. Uh, okay, well, let's uh, lighten these up again. We did darken down in the area here, but I'm going to just at the end of these feathers here. Well, they may not necessarily be feathers, just the end of the crown there. And when it comes to uh, the, the crown that we want to do on Friday, when we do this as more the demonic character, well, what are we going to do there? Do we have it be more of a a copper? Well, it's going to be lit from underneath. It's going to be lit from underneath, so it certainly will not be a light crown. I think it's just going to have to be as some kind of darker metal something. Uh, let me see. Do we want to go lighter here? Yes. We'll just do a couple little lighter bits on these stones out here even though they're going to get some decent coverage of foliage just seems that way and again, all of the the storm center slash lazy square figures they this is not a base that i had to make the they come with these type of decorative bases which is extra sweet right uh, you don't have to break out the scopey or anything like that much as we love our Sculpey bases. Yeah, let's, uh, yeah, uh, uh Ryder 40k and, uh, Lord of the Rings are two very different, uh, I think they have nothing, unfortunately, nothing to do with each other. And the scale is nowhere, <laughs> the scale of the two is completely different. So they they are massively different scales. So yeah, you can't. Uh, well, GW makes sure that you can't use fantasy miniatures for Lord of the Rings, or well, certainly not 40k miniatures. I mean, I, I guess it's understandable because they wouldn't want you to just be able to play all their systems just buying one set of figures. And it's kind of always been that way. We always, we to this day, we still suspect that is why they made the Lord of the Rings figure, one of the reasons why they made the Lord of the Rings figures at a smaller scale. I don't want the neck to get any lighter because that should most certainly be an almost as full shadow, no doubt about it. So we can let that be a little bit of a mid-tone back there, but beyond that, not too much. My next question is what happens out here now if there's a, a couple of a mold lines that went out here too that's why we're we're trying to kind of hide some of that on the uh no actually it's a balrog actually it's a b a l r o g so bellicor maybe that sounds more like that all right what we're gonna do is uh Bring in our light over here. I'm just so tempted to do stuff here, but I mean, there's a whole figure sitting on top of it. How can we put highlights and stuff over there when it should just clearly all be in shadow without a doubt? I think we've been successful here as far as getting enough color on that to separate it from this. However, maybe we get cheeky and we throw a little bit of this sort of orange color in a couple of spots on our foot over here. Just a couple here. Let's, uh... I, I like the fact that we got that green in there because it's reflecting some of our... 
And remember, there's going to be the vegetation on this. Will make there will be more green added to this. Uh, Stila, having now kind of experienced both of them, it's easier to deal with the print supports because they just they create that little bit of a dot. Whereas here, well, not not so much here, but remember the Lord of the Rings stuff. Remember when we were working on these guys, and every single hand had a mold line running right through the hand. Every single horse has a mold line going right down the center of their head. There, there's just mold lines in these crucial places that just destroy entire bits of detail. So to me, I'd rather deal with the print supports. I know that it can make things a little dicey sometimes. But for me, it's the uh, it's got to be the the print supports. And the more, let's just say, the more I learn about that, I'm sure I'll be able to mitigate that even more. Whereas there's nothing I can do about mold lines because I didn't cast it right. Now you you have you've printed more things than I have. Where where do you stand on that issue? Now of course it will depend on like each company, right? They they set up the supports different. They they rotate the figure differently. So I. It can become more adventurous for sure. I'm look. Oh, yeah. We're gonna go back here. Well, I think we'll do the Egyptian violet again because I'm looking here. There's there's that. There's not a lot of resolution right there. It gets a little bit soft in there. Egyptian violet mixed with their indigo here. Yeah, steal it. Now I have not done the supports at all myself. I and and it can be to the chagrin of some of the three D folks. I said, look, I have zero time for supports. I I have if it unless you create a seventy five hour day and a twelve day week, there's no time for that. So that's the whole reason why I'm choosing the the kind of the digital or the 3d print over a figure that I have to snip off a sprue and assemble myself in file mold lines because if I've got to do the supports and everything that like that myself I understand the advantage of it to me the time savings is lost and I might as well just go ahead and file mold lines yeah still I think what was uh, the weirdest thing is I've seen some miniatures that instead of being set at a 15 degree rotation or 20 or 25, it was practically a 90 degree rotation. And, I just, and this is a person who, suppose, who shouldn't know anything about that was going, whoa, that seems a bit extreme to me. Uh, now this is a uh, so Prussian blue fortified with a wee bit of the indigo, nice and dark there. Yeah, the, I, I guess the other thing too is it called lychee or lychee or whatever. That seems to be a more user-friendly version of the the chiru box, which the the chiru box is definitely not. Uh, ugh. That's not my favorite software, to say the least. And I think a lot of other people, it's the same way. I suppose, like, like uh, you would say there, at a certain point, people just say, look, there's there's a lot of competition out there. You may have pre-supported files, but if they're poor, supported poorly, it, but news will get out there who does it well and who doesn't. Because I can't be the only person who does not have any time for fooling around with supports. Uh, Drax, there was actually no, well, <laughs> I guess we sort of by default created Yellow Ochre, but we started out with a Burnt Umber, Asphaltum, and Terra Rosa pre-glaze. There's actually a lot of greens in here. There's a lot of purples in here. We've got Fanchon Red mixed with Cadmium Yellow Deep. Yeah, 
So there's, there's a lot. Of, actually, that's kind of almost like a flesh tone orange over there. You've got purple over here. This is actually indigo mixed with cadmium yellow deep to make a bit of a green over here. This is like a seafoam green right next to some purple over there. Here you've got a tiny bit of yellow. Uh, there's sort of an asphaltum back there. Then you got more of the orange over here. So that was terra rosa mixed, or no, fanchion red mixed with a little bit of the cadmium yellow deep. We got purple over here, green, orange over there. And just like Steela said, it's Drax Fultum, because it's Drax's fault that we use asphaltum all the time. He discovered it, so when you discover something, you have to. It has to be named after you. And that's why. <laughs> that's why this is technically this is misnamed. Where's our? Yeah, well, this is not the right one here. Where's our asphaltum container here? It's around here somewhere. Yeah, we've got to, we have to read, yeah. We have to change the name on this. This is the incorrect name. Yeah, Drex, uh, I think it was also in the beginning. That's when we, uh, or in the middle, kind of, we started to add some of these greens and purples in here. Because, uh, especially down here, you could see there's a lot of blue and green into this part of the gold. And then we went in with some orange for contrast. You can see there's a ton of orange in here. So there's a lot of terra rosa in there. But then as we get down in here, you can see there's more of those greens again. And that was just the Prussian blue mixed with some of our cadmium yellow. So yeah, nothing uh, nothing super special there. Uh, let's see how long we've wanted to do. Uh, Ryder, uh, I never know, unfortunately, it's very difficult for me to know what I'm going to be able to stream from one day to the next. So, yeah, unfortunately, that's not super practical. Uh, also, I pretty much use the same colors, right? We Indigo, umber, the black. Sometimes we'll introduce something like the interference colors, but there's not a lot of colors. I mean, if you've got these right here... Uh, there's your burnt umber. There's your cadmium yellow. Where's oh our Van Dyke brown? This and this. Oh, where's our terra rosa? If you've got that pile right there, you've got 90% uh, of what I use most of the time right there. Because uh, yeah, we uh, pretty much all these those colors will show up in a given miniature. Uh, some might be more than others. Like, like obviously here we're emphasizing some of the blue again, and you see an awful lot of the terra rosa, the fanchion red, of course, because of the skin tones too. Now, if there's something again when we throw in these interference, well, that's a little bit different, but otherwise it's that same set of stuff, time after time. There are not really many now. Thalo green. Actually, we've been we've been removing colors from the palette. <laughs> we've uh, pretty much any time one gets added, one or two get removed. Yeah, Ryder. Now, hopefully, uh, hopefully you won't have to. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know. You might get so excited about those interference powders, you might want to get those. But hopefully the uh, the powders mean that folks don't necessarily have to try and get those from Williamsburg. Because I know not everybody has easy access, like Stila, <laughs> to Williamsburg stuff. But those, those powders seem to be kind of ubiquitous. They seem to be kind of everywhere. So yeah, Drax, there was no real specific color. We did kind of start out with a, a lot of umber and the asphaltum and the terra rosa. And then we, we sort of went over the top of it with the cadmium yellow. Just uh, where's our, uh, you know, with our typical brush here, the light stroke over the top. And then we started to kind of, I think we went with the greens. And then we started going in with the oranges and then the purple started to come in there. 
and then we started to come in with the lightest colors. <laughs> yep, Stila. I just know how difficult it is for you to get the Williamsburg, so if I can at least save you from having to deal with getting those interference paints, that could be probably very helpful. Oh, let's uh, speaking of asphaltum over here. Let's use a little bit of asphaltum here or draxphaltum. And that same asphaltum slash draxphaltum again was super handy right over here for doing some of the darker rusting and staining on this. It was absolutely fantastic. And folks, be sure to go back and watch uh, what we were doing last week. It was Metals Week. Even our sculpting stream had metal in it. Tinfoil armatures, but hey, I'm still counting that as metal. So be sure and go back and watch those. It's, it's very much, I try to make things as much like a YouTube channel as I can. Because not all of these things necessarily can uh, be walked over to the YouTube channel quite so easily. Now this one is definitely one that we can sort of break down and make a YouTube video out of it. The ten and a half hour goblin painting stream, well, that... <laughs> unless I did it in several episodes, which I just might do, I might actually break that down into three parts or something like that. And just call it the Goblin Mega Series or something. I don't know. Do I need to bring in more dark over here? Ah, eh, maybe. But just look at again. Okay, like this feather down in here. You know, I'll just darken that. Because if I had too much in the way of light, then none of the highlights matter. If every if everything is equally highlighted, and that's something we. Oof, that used to happen a lot in the early days. We would highlight the tip of the feet or that bottom of the cloak almost as much as we'd highlight the top of the head <laughs> because we didn't quite... I mean, it was a miniature instead of a painting, so we kind of forgot those basic principles. And, and then we sort of got reminded. We would well, maybe look at what other miniature painters did, and we said, wait a second, we're kind of forgetting some things here. Why are we highlighting these parts in shadow as much as the stuff that's catching the full-on ambient light? What's going on with that? Now, just, you learn. <laughs> Sometimes the easy way, usually the hard way. Again, that, that, that whole face-into-brick-wall style of learning, yeah. I, I still feature that type of learning for myself today. That's why all of our brick walls look so shabby right now. We'll throw, I think, a couple of lights here right on the ends of some of these feathers that are, again, facing up this way. Okay, here with the golds right here. Okay. And there, um, a mold line thing. We'll just sort of hide that. And now we're going to bring in just a... So this is the Brilliant Yellow Pale, by the way. Uh, so writer for me growing up, it was definitely going to be Bill Alexander because he was, well, Bob Ross. He was Bob Ross's mentor. So Bob Ross sort of followed in Bill Alexander's footsteps. And for me, as far as just 2D artists... The, the pre-Raphaelites are going to be my favorites. And uh, Alphonse Mucha, if I have to just name one name, that would be probably my favorite artist. Also, uh, Singer, John Singer, sorry, that's, a, that's another one that, that's a favorite of mine. Another watercolorist. But actually... Uh, Alphonse Mucha spent uh, quite a bit of time in Chicago. Ah, Deuce has an old Bill Alexander book, right? The thinner paint will stick to the thicker paint. Yes. 
Boy, I used to used to watch Bill Alexander all the time. That was if you're wondering why I was doing oil paintings at eleven, twelve, whatever, it's because of Bill Alexander. And then he and Bob Ross, I I'm pretty sure they were very good friends. I'm I'm pretty sure they were. At least the Bob Ross book that I had. He was uh talked about how he was he really loved Bill Alexander. You know what? I'm gonna just uh, again clean up time here. We're just kinda cleaning up some edges here. Now, so Drax, on, on that bust that you were going to work with with the oils, is that going to have a lot of golds on it there? Because I, I know that <laughs> gold non-metallic metal is one of your favorite things to do. Not writer, it's just kind of Bob Ross sort of followed in his footsteps. And I'm pretty sure that Bill uh, Alexander just kind of mentored him and just kind of said, look, hey, you might want to do this. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd have to kind of read again the exact story on that, but it was a kind of a mentoring type of thing. So this is another case where I'm just trying to sharpen up that edge. Now I'm here. I'm glad I got some of that that uh, purple in there. Some of the Egyptian violet. In fact, so much so that I'm tempted. Well, color goes somewhere. It must go everywhere. Why not just take a little bit of this Egyptian violet over here, be sneaky about it, and chuck it into here. That should make it nice and dark too. I mean, not that Prussian blue or indigo blue aren't dark, but also now a little bit of a color difference there. I might. Well, this is not something I really get to do very often. Maybe we're going to do a little bit of a, almost like a pin line wash slash glaze of the Egyptian violet over an area. Now, we, we've said this a lot lately with the oils. You can thin them, but you can't dilute them. You can make them thinner, but they're not like acrylics where you're going to dilute them. Uh, <laughs> if you take the the Egyptian violet like this, you can thin it as much as you want. It's still going to be Egyptian violet. That That's the difference, which is why. And we'll bring this one back. It's always a good example here. Those glowing eyes on those skulls, that was our, I think that was our brilliant yellow pale. That's probably about 95% thinner, and that covered that much with maybe 5% paint. That's why I say you can you can thin those colors, but you're not going to be able to dilute them. Not like acrylics. If you did that with acrylics, you'd barely have a hint of any kind of light color there. That That's another one of those differences, just kind of those physical differences, the oils to the acrylics. I know most people they they really focus in on the drying time. To me that's uh that's like the least important of the differences. In fact it it, it is. It is the least important of the differences. There's so many other things that are from a structural standpoint that are more important to kind of keep in mind. More so that you can take full advantage of it. Not like you better remember this or else. It's more like, well, if you really want to get the full advantage of using oils, just keep these things in mind. Once again, this and there was another feather that I saw sitting out here that went, oh, I better get some something lighter on that. Was it one of these guys? One of these? Ah, yeah. That's actually a feather there. Again, I thought that was going to be gold. Not so much, and I also saw that we, yeah, that, that shading-wise, if that was just cloth or something like that, that sort of shading pattern works, or highlight pattern works, but this is not cloth. We need to do something else. So here we're going to see what we can do with this cadmium yellow light. 
which obviously has more of a greener look to it, right, than our cadmium yellow deep. I want to see what I can do on some of these little, almost like runes. Pop in a couple of, like here, this is all just dark here. I got to do something more than just dark there. Yeah, little, little hints of light. Oh, gee whiz, this too. I mean, it's facing this way. That needed to be lighter. That hell. Do I need to do the same thing on this? And eh, I really enjoy that green right there. Don't want to toast that. Uh, let me see. I had a local student who asked what color to paint snow that was in shadow to consider using violet today. Well, hopefully it does, Deuce. Hopefully it does. I mean, of course, well, then... There's our favorite little spacecape right here that we've got. Where's, where's our 2D stuff? Actually, wait a minute. Let's, there's a couple of things that have snow. So look at, there's violet in that snow. Look at the picture that's on the lower right-hand corner. There's definitely violet in the snow there. No question about it. You can see that. Even on, not so much on the one on the upper right, but definitely the one on the lower right. You can see the violet in there. Uh, no, no snow there. Uh, oh, well, there's some snow. And actually, I think you can see some. There's some violet in the snow there. Well, for sure, you're going to get some violet there. That would still be a really fun spacecape again to do. When, oh, wait, wait. What about the... Okay, I know there's spacecape there. Well, not going to be too much snow there, but definitely lots of uh, fun colors. I think at one point I was uh, I was tempted to sculpt those dragons to see if I could paint them. Sculpt my old 2D dragons and then see if I could paint them in those same color schemes. Because I think there was four or five of those guys that kept popping up into all the uh, that series of I was like eight of them I think I did so maybe at a certain point we start to sculpt a few well we're gonna have to be sculpting Lord of the Rings stuff for now because well we need that but maybe at a certain point we start to sculpt some other other things too this for sure I think could use a little bit of reflected light here. So that's that sea foam green. I'm actually going to borrow some of that and bring it over here. This is why the miniature is your palette, right? I'm going to chuck a little bit of our brilliant yellow pail into that cadmium yellow light. So just a, lighten up a smidge here. This also needs to be lightened just slightly here ever so slightly I think now I'm gonna cut down on that a bit so we'll get all the paint out of the brush here and this is where it kind of turns into a bit of a blending brush there we go so just uh, there was some weird hard edges all of a sudden that popped in there don't want that in fact I'm going to mix some green again and that's gonna go in here and over there too so we got the orange over there green over here so the orange kind of facing upwards the green facing down towards all this towards the ground now when we do this again on Friday it's gonna be a whole different whole different deal this stuff is gonna be more of that that blue gray generic lighting and all that warm lighting is going to come from down here. So this is we're like warm lighting here, cool lighting here. It's going to be the reverse. So Friday it gets reversed. And Friday again we are painting this same figure. Well, not this particular figure. But this same sculpt we'll be painting it again. Except in a more demonic type of form. A little bit of a under dramatic lighting from below. Much like our Balrog and all of our little gobos and now apparently our Kazadoom dwarves as well and uh, so Armored Wolf has posted up a little link there to the Patreon page and I just posted the latest video well now six hours ago I think
think that was the eighth video this month already. I was a little bit shocked. Oh, wait, okay, there's already been eight of them. And I will be filming for sure another one Tuesday and another one Wednesday. I don't think I'll be able to film one tonight. I'll mostly be setting up those other two for filming. Uh, one of those will certainly be episode three of our Thousand Suns series. So that's going to that's gonna be the big kind of messy phase where we're working on the entire unit. So we did the color test figure here. We're getting into the rest of the army phase. And, and the last video that I just put up, that was this figure right here. This was in our Mandalorian. It showed you how to do the base, how to weather the base, how to paint the entire thing in oils with true metallic metals. And again, look at that fun. That's not the light reflecting on the miniature. That is the... That's the actual metallic paint right there. Look at the temperature shift of that green because the interference green is a much cooler green. Now here's that same green but mixed with phthalo green, a very cool green. Same interference green mixed into a different green paint. Look at the result. Very different, huh? Very different. That's the kind of stuff that I like to show on the Patreon page is different materials, different methods of doing maybe a similar effect because maybe you're more comfortable with one type of medium or material or something like that. As, as we said earlier, I really don't like to just keep doing the same stuff over and over. There's, well, there's too many new materials out there right now to just keep using the same stuff over and over. There is too much. I also do terrain, lots of basing videos, dioramas. So we did an entire series as an example. Where is our, there we go. So I think it was a three-part series or a four-part series on the Muses of Delphi, the diorama, the painting of some of the miniatures. Each one of these represents a separate tutorial. About two hours, 100 minutes to 120 minutes. Each of those is a separate tutorial. We've done two versions of these owl bears. That was the summer scene. Here is the winter scene. And this was one of our latest dark sword figures right here. So a little reflection in the water and icicles and all that kind of fun stuff. That's where we're trying out the green stuff world. Uh, the new uh, snow flock, which I really like. It, it's uh, the closest thing to, say, the crushed glass that I've found. Not exactly. Nothing Nothing will ever be exactly that, but pretty close. It gives you that sparkle. All right, this is a kind of a yellowish green here. Oh, what the heck, I'll go with a little bit more titanium white into that, and we'll... Bring out the edges of these rocks here. My finger has kind of been wiping away some of that. Uh, as far as the drying time on oils. Now for me, it also depends on what paint you use because some paints do, as far as oils, they take longer to dry than others. Ooh, 8 to 12 hours, usually a miniature is dry. When I go to put the my, my varnish on it or the whatever, it's going to be the anti-shine from Army Painter. Yes, it's the same, just like any acrylic painted miniature. Ah, friendly Pyro, welcome back. Well, duh. that we have to greet you appropriately here. Let's, oh, wait, wait, here we go. Look at this. Pyromancers. Pyromancers for friendly Pyro. Yes. Uh, those guys were very fun. I enjoyed those guys. I think one of my new... Uh, I think it's going to be Series 24. Uh, what the heck are they called? But it's Song of Ice and Fire, and they're all walking around with like flaming swords and stuff. That is going to be, I believe, Series 24. So you have a good night there, friendly Pyro. And hopefully we'll hopefully we'll see a Thursday as well when we're doing our sculpting stream. 
but definitely on Friday when we paint this one up again again in an entirely different type of a color scheme I really enjoy seeing the same miniature and two very different color schemes again throwing in a little bit of our lighter green into a few places really trying to unify everything here uh, I'll throw a little more yellow into it now this is a very pale almost like a yellowish green here this this stuff on over here I don't know I'd like to get some kind of separation from this from uh, maybe that's hair Maybe that's what that is. Yep, just just a couple little dots of something. Just something over there. And when we talk about thinning the paint, I mean, literally it's just... I mean, that's how much we're talking about. We, we're literally just a dot of this thinner. That is why something like this is going to last me five days. So I, I know the folks, they're worried about, you know, gallons of toxic this and that and the other. It's like, well, no, we don't really have any of that stuff sitting around. <laughs> we don't have any of that around. We use the, the, the brush cleaner that we use is the same stuff we clean our acrylic brushes with or our acrylic paints with. I generally just use dish soap for cleaning my hands. No harsh cleaners again. The brushes are the same brushes that I use for my acrylic paints because, well, at least the oil paints aren't getting down into this ferrule. With the acrylic paints, as soon as you start using them, that nasty acrylic paint is uh, working its way down in the ferrule, never to be removed again. Uh, let's see. No, uh, Lady B has mentioned the unmentionable name of Cobalt Violet. Cobalt Violet. Yes, the, the Pretender of Purples, the Violator of Violets, yes. Cobalt Violet. It's, it's a fantastic watercolor paint. Sadly, it is not a fantastic oil paint. And we have made that dis we made that discovery about a few paints mostly in the range of blues for whatever reason now yeah, lady b that's uh we've heard that uh, a lot of folks talk about how the metallics get down into the ferrule of the brush and do all kinds of nasty things to it fortunately when you're using the metallic oils well you still have fortunately that advantage of it's still oil paint but boy, every, uh, well, since we didn't really use metallics before, it didn't matter. We didn't know about that. But uh, you know, now that we get to see more people painting and stuff, we just keep hearing over and over again about how those metallic paints, they'll get into your brush and do nasty things. Yeah, Deuce, uh, well, you know how the, the brushes have that pro that life progression and they end up being a, a spatter brush like this or a stippling brush like where we, we cut off part of the brush here and use it for spattering and such. I mean, you can see that's uh, maybe gotten... It might have been used for uh, texture paste once or twice. <laughs> As you can see, these things, they see a lot of action. All right, here's another one where we sort of trimmed off the ends to almost make it like a super long filbert brush. Yeah, I just, uh, we have not really done much stuff. Well, the last week I've painted more miniatures in metallic effects or TMM in the last week than I have over the last 20 years. And this is a person who has painted thousands upon thousands of miniatures over those 20 years. Because, well, unfortunately, just the nature of things, and nobody asked us to ever paint things in metallics, so we didn't.
so Lady B says that it's a red day. It's a sword day. You will ride to ruin in the world's ending with the host with the most. There we go. Rohan. And where where are you saying it? Where are you at? There he is. Ride. Ride. Uh, and up. Death. Just just saying. Death. Wait, 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 what? What are you talking about there? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's all good. Oh, uh, watch out for the elephants, maybe. Yep. Which have, oh, we still have to finish off our elephant. That's right. <laughs> what was I just, oh, there was the, oh, it was a song to that one TV show where it says Cleveland rocks at the end. Is that, does, do you change that lyric to say Theoden rocks? Which, of course, oh, I've got the old, I realized I have the old uh, Witch King on Fell Beast, the metal one. Yes, there was a Fell Beast and Witch King in metal, much like the Balrog. And he's kind of, uh, shall we say, just sitting there having a snack on uh, Snow Mane there. Yeah, do so. I'm looking forward to those uh, those powdered pigments. I just I'm very excited about what's possible. I think other companies have maybe tried to do some sort of thing like those, but not necessarily so successfully on the miniature side of things. Oh, oh yeah, Drew Drew Carey. That's right, because he's all about Cleveland, right? But when you when you said that, that's all that 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 came to mind was that particular song there, and and ch uh, changing the words to say it in rocks. That's uh, which I suppose somebody could do. Yeah, uh, you know what? I'm gonna just throw a smidge of my where's my quick dry white here. Just throw a smidge of that back out here. And my smidge, well, maybe a bit more of a smidge than that. Maybe just a bit more. No, those, uh, but Lady B, those things are, I was, uh, all, ex I was totally expecting to not like those whatsoever. I was all set to be disappointed by those, and how many chances did we give them to disappoint, and they never did. They just, all they do is continue to impress. I was sure. It's like, there's no way that does what they say it's going to do. And it did. It did exactly what they said it was going to do. And I went, wow. I did not think it was possible for in that format to get that sort of finish. And boy, did it ever work. There, they add, there's a whole bunch of new products that they have that uh, hopefully will be coming this way. Uh, some more of the silicon molds. Apparently they have more of the tall foliage. There's a blue-green tall foliage that looks absolutely fantastic. Boy, oh boy. Ugh. I don't know how well this is going to work. But what I'm going to try and do is catch just a small little line of highlights there. Okay, that worked. Oh, boy. Got to do the same over here. Not quite going to be easy based on what we did before here, but let's see if it can work. Get that one here. Next one here. Next one there. And then there. So I think we've got a little chain of lights there. Lighten that just a smidge. Got to figure out what do we want to do here, because there's there's white there, and that's just nah, no, nope, not working there. Any color is better than zero color, and that was just some orange that we threw there. And I'm thinking either yeah, let's go with our Egyptian violet over here again as a uh, dark underneath this. I always uh, it's always kind of fun to have the orange and purple together here. I 
yeah, Drift, there's, uh, well, and I, I thought I was, well, I didn't think I was really caught up at all, but I, I didn't think I was behind on stuff like the, like that tall foliage. I didn't know they had done more of that. And that, that tall foliage is, well, it's, it's unique. No one else really does stuff like that. And, and finding that, that there was, I think, three, at least three new tall foliage things. I went, holy smokes. Uh, tell your local stores. Ah, oh, wow, Lady B. That's. Uh, I, I'm kind of. I'm glad to hear that that there is a local place. Well, first of all, it makes it easier for you to get. But I'm just kind of glad that that Green Stuff World is able to get stuff into stores, and have that kind of reach, which is really good news to me. Because I would really like for them to succeed. All right, this this upper lip here. I'm going to try to add a smidge to it, and then maybe even bring that back down again. Uh, let's see. Also, some uh, some green stuff for night haunts. Now uh, that here we just we tend to get the the larger tubes of it just from Amazon or Micromark. That's the other catalog. Micromark definitely has some uh, the, the green stuff in the tubes. I'll just spread a little bit of light there so that we, we do able to darken down the upper lip and then sort of cut that. It's going to be interesting when we do the more demonic version of this and the light's coming from underneath. We are going to have to somehow find ways that, ooh, that's going to be interesting. All right, let's uh, do a quick little thing here with our cleaner, right? We'll just see if we can't find ourselves a paper towel, hopefully, that's got a little less in the way of paint on it. In fact, I'm sure we've used this for other little demos of our cleaner here. And it really doesn't take very much, just a few drops onto the paper towel. And in no time flat, look at that. All gone. All gone. And again, this is... It is... You can use it for your acrylic paints, too. Can't they use it all the time for acrylic paints? Not hazardous, no vapor. I, I would suggest just rinsing your hands off before you go back to touching your brushes or something like that. I don't care for myself if, if there's, like, paint coming off of my brush handle. doesn't matter to me. But some folks, they, they might get a little bit tweaky if their brushes start having no paint on the handle like that. Me again, don't care. <laughs> I can add plenty of paint back to that handle. That's not a problem for me. I can do that real easy like. I'm going to go back over here. Where's my Terra Rosa? Well, Terra Rosa here and... The, the the this here I I, I want to keep the that grayishness here mostly because again what's below here but I'd like to get a little bit more of a yeah so the Terra Rosa remember it is opaque it's pretty darn intense color for something that is just sort of a reddish brown and now now I feel like okay that's a little bit less gray there now feel better about that didn't take much. Yeah, it's also fantastic on sandwiches. Highly recommended, of course. Now, on these uh, little talons, here, I, th I think uh, we've got to figure out what is going on with this side of them. What is happening over there? I'll take this white. Well, it's white with other... Uh, palette sludge in it too. <laughs> it's it's mostly white. A wee bit of palette sludge. But let, let's figure out what the inside of these are going to look like here. I mean if there's supposed to be some kind of sharp things maybe we just want to make sure we've got something that shows there's an edge here. And again, if a mold line comes through an area, sometimes you have to just uh, 
draw in the texture a little bit. Maybe that, that uh, texture got a little bit erased when you were filing away the mold lines. Uh, so yeah, the, the green stuff, really do enjoy that. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get in another order of the the Sculpey there. So we've got Sculpey Gray, we've got our regular Sculpey, because we've got a whole bunch of bases that we got to do now. Although I have to say I enjoyed the, was it the Daz Air Drying Clay in the Woodland Scenics molds. That, that's unfortunately a basing thing that I haven't had a chance to film yet. Well, I, I, I wanted to test them first to see, well, do they really work? Uh, what works there is a little bit of purple. See that? Purple right next to the orange there. Uh, let's see. Uh, Dark Hearts Rising, actually, the Patreon page with the tutorial videos, that is, uh, it's more like a living book right there because while it has, it has every, uh, if you do the Army Painter Pledge, that is every tutorial I've ever filmed in the last eight years. And as you can imagine, all those, all the 2D art and everything else that went into all of these eight years of tutorials. So that's pretty much the, and it's actually better than a book because you really get to see the process as opposed to, I mean, pictures are great. That's what I was doing on the blog. But people said, we would rather see you doing videos. And that's actually why we did that original uh, painting pyramid Kickstarter all those years ago, back in 2013. Because people, they wanted to see it in a video format. And then since then, that's why I've done the, the Patreon thing, because uh, I just I keep filming the videos, and that was the best way. Oh, thanks, Darkheart. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Now, it, people have asked, well, of course, there's the Book of Wapple that uh, lots and lots of folks want to see. And it would be really, it would be kind of nice to be able to do something like that, where we literally do a chapter of this, and then we maybe just show some miniatures that really emphasize that particular chapter. But a lot of the same principles that just went into what we did here in the last about five and a half hours there. Now there's a here. Let's do a little bit of book of Wapo, and we'll we'll start kind of at the beginning here again, and we'll leave around. So at the beginning there is the if a color goes somewhere, it must go everywhere. You've heard me say that over and over, right? What did we start with? We started with those craft brushes. It was very messy. Right, it was super, super messy. And right here, we made decisions, right? We just said, you know what? We're just going to go blue on whatever cloak there is. We're going to go with white on the feathers. And we're also going to go with you know, something like the, just the skin tone and on the part that I thought maybe might not be skin tone. Just said, you know what? We're just going to go with that. And with the oils, sometimes you just got to jump on that oils boat and let it take you where it will. And we've said this many times, right? If you don't have dark, you, you can't have highlight. You can you can make the thing white if you want. You are never going to have, <laughs> you're never gonna have that full highlight. Midtones. Midtones are really, really, really important. And you get to see those more, I think like this. I think this you'll see film noir. Midtones. There's a whole bunch of midtones in the wings here. That's a midtone. A lot of these are midtones. Midtones again. Even some of these areas here on the cloak and the, the skin, that is a that's not a highlight. That's a midtone. Uh, let's see. The Curse City board game is coming out of my budget this year, but it will contrast to my Curse of Strahd minis against when I first picked up a paintbrush. So yeah, there's uh, right now there's 50 chapters to the Book of Wapple, and there are sculpting chapters now because yes, we are, we have been sculpting, and whether it's miniatures or things like our 
Galadriel bust or where's our AON bust over here? So this is a couple Thursdays ago. Oh, oh, this is good. This is good. This is good. Watch the difference here. Watch the cheekbone here. Look at this. Look at the difference there again. Shading is there. The value is there. But what you don't see is the intensity change. Look at the, the cheek right there, the intensity of the red on that cheek. You can almost see that this has a little bit of almost like a greenish look to it by comparison. Again, almost a bit of a green here and here. But you can see that temperature shift, but you only see that when the color comes back. You know, when you, otherwise, you see the shading. So sorry I forgot to bring back <laughs> sorry I forgot to bring back the color, but it was a handy little lesson. At least I hope it was. All right, we got this uh, green down here. Yeah, I know it c it can drive folks nuts when I'm telling them that, you know, what are you painting your gold and well green, purple, blue, gray. <laughs> Very little of this is actually yellow as far as the golds. I know there's uh, what is that? Some kind of phone app that detects the colors or something like that. This thing, my average thing, where I've done non-metallic metal gold or even now true metallic gold, the amount of actual yellow it would detect would be minimal because I just put green in there. <laughs> ah, there you go. Do <laughs> Deuce is just uh, showing what everything looks like when painted with acrylics which is surprisingly dingy. No one no one more surprised than us, right, Light Deuce? Were we not surprised when we compared those two figures together? Ah, a little bit of green right over there on the opposite side of this. So what we're talking about are these two miniatures. So this is painted in the brightest possible acrylic colors, fluorescent paints, the most intense acrylics, and then... And then along comes over, and they just say, step aside, step aside, let, let the real paint get the work done here. So, I mean, yeah, they look, uh, if you did this in black and white, it would, you know, the film noir, it, they would look very much the same. But this was shocking. No, Nobody was more shocked than me to see that. I thought, what the heck happened there? But, yeah, and that was with, uh, that's fluorescent acrylic paint. Look at how it's making the camera go nuts still cannot compare it to the oil paint so he, again huge surprise to me i was not expecting that now here we've got our greens back here perhaps right over here we got nothing except just a little big dark line there trying to get a little bit of a reflected light there i think that helps that's just too wide of a thing a lot of scopes these days, especially in the, the digital printed side of things and such, or even the, the game piece things, they will have some of these details that are going to be a little bit on the heftier side, which means sometimes you got to do something like this. All right, we have to come back in there. It can't just all be a dark outline there. That, that's just, well, that's the dreaded dark lining kind of well, I think some people just call it black lining or whatever. We we tried to call it dark lining just because, well, we never really use black for it. We're just using some form of dark color for it. All right, I think I will just... Oh, oh look at this. Look at this. Thank you so much, Ryder. <laughs> not much left, is there? There is not much left at all. But thank you so much for those bits there. You know, we appreciate that all the time. I know this month, it, well, the last couple of months, well, every month, that's made a huge difference. The last couple of months have been definitely significant. Just the timing of it and stuff came at a fantastic moment. Now, I'm just trying to take the lightest of lights here. I think we've gone in, we've... We've hit a lot of the mid-tones, right? Now we can maybe say, all right, at, at, this, at this point, now we have to really think about what's the lightest light going to be. Especially, like, on the ends of these. Up here, whoops, up here. 
uh, just a couple of these along here. Let's see if we can do this right on that point here. Another point there, there. Just working my way down here. Yep. It's those little points of light. It's it's stuff reflecting around it. Maybe other light bouncing around. 